Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline from Knitting House Square and today I have another knitting tutorial for you. So today's knitting tutorial is actually a collaboration with Hobby Yarns. So if you aren't familiar with Hobby Yarns, Hobby Yarns is an online yarn retailer. They're based in Denmark and they ship worldwide so be sure to check them out. And what they were doing is a Here Comes the Sun collaboration. So their idea was that we were going to pick out different yellow yarns or things that remind us of spring and we're going to knit a project with them. So of course, I couldn't just do a project, I had to do a full tutorial. So today I decided to pick something that was kind of like a fun, good, light spring project. So we're going to be doing toe-up socks. And here are two of the samples that I have that I knit out of these hobby yarns. So the one I'm going to be showing you in this video is this yellow colorway right here. And each one of the different steps that we're going to go through is first, we're going to start with the cast on. So the cast on that I'm using is Judy's Magic Cast On, and I'm gonna take you through each one of those steps. Then we're gonna increase up through the toe, work all the way up through the foot of the sock. Then for the heel, I actually have two different options because I couldn't stop at one. <laughs> so in this current video that you're watching, I'm gonna be showing you a short row heel. Now if instead you're interested in an afterthought heel, which is what I have over here on the self-striping version, if you're interested in the self-striping version, I'll have that video linked down below, and you could go over to that one, watch the um, Afterthought Heel, then come back again to this one for the rest of the sock. So once we finish the heel, we're gonna rejoin it around, work all the way up through the leg, then lastly, finish off with ribbing, and then up here at the top, we do a really stretchy cast off. So this is Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off up here at the top. So those are each one of the different steps I'm gonna take you through in this video. And again, if you are interested in the afterthought heel, I'll link that video down below. Down in the description box, you're gonna find a whole bunch of helpful information. <laughs> so first up, you're gonna find each one of the video breakpoints. That way you can fast forward or rewind any specific part of this video that you're looking for. You're also gonna find the full written version of this pattern, which is available as a free PDF download. And then lastly, you're gonna find each one of the hobby supplies that I used to create this video and my different projects here. So thank you so much, Javi, for providing all the yarns for this tutorial. I'll have all the supplies, the yarn, the colorways, the knitting needles, the tapestry needle, everything that I used linked down below to the Hobby website. I just wanted to take a moment here to show you some cool features on the Hobby website. So first up, they do have tons and tons of free patterns, right? So if you click on the Patterns tab on their website, you can just scroll through. There are so many available on here, and they are so cute. So I would highly recommend checking these out. They also have a cool feature called Hobby Plus, which is a subscription-based membership. And within this, you can get up to three free patterns each month. And there are a bunch of other perks too, like 10% off a full price purchase, different things like that. So if you're interested in that option, check that out on the website as well. Now, in terms of the yarn that I picked out to work on this video, I actually picked two of their newest sock yarns to work with. So the two I picked was first up, let's talk about the solid colors. So I picked the Rainbow Four Ply Sock Wool. And this comes in so many different colorways. Now, of course, the theme here was yellow, so I picked out some yellow yarn, and then for the heel, cuff, and toe, I picked out a contrasting cream color. Now, the other sock yarn you see in my intro, that is one of their self-striping sock yarns. And if you've seen any of my sock tutorials before, you know I love self-striping yarn, so I had to pick one of these ones. So this yarn is called Silly Socks, and it has so many, again, cute colorways. Um, I'll really just love any silk striping colorway, <laughs> so it's hard for me to choose. But I picked one, purple's my favorite color, so there's like a purpley plum color in the one that I picked out. And then I used that same cream yarn for my heel cuff and toe. Just a real quick overview of all the different materials I'm using for this project. So first, my two yarns are the Rainbow Sock for Ply Wool. And these ones are both fingering weight yarn. So I have the cream for the heel, cuff, and toe and the yellow for the main portion of the sock. Then for my knitting needles, we're gonna be knitting using Magic Loop. So we want a circular knitting needle with a long cord. So these are the Knit Pro Nova and I have just about a 40 inch cord there. Now I do knit my socks on US zeros. If you're a newer knitter or you tend to be a tight knitter, which means it's a little bit more difficult to slide your stitches along your cord, I would recommend going up to a US one. Then the last thing we're gonna need is a tapestry needle or a wool needle. So here I'm gonna be using the smallest size, the 2.3 millimeter Hobby wool needles in aluminum. So now let's get started with that cast on. 
So the first thing I'm going to be showing you is Judy's Magic Cast On. So all I have in front of me are my circular knitting needles here and then my working yarn. So the way I'm going to position my yarn is I want my ball of yarn further away from me and then a tail coming out the front towards me. And I always like to have a little bit of extra yarn. So let's say I have about 18 inches here or so. Now I'm going to hold the knitting needles kind of like on a flat plane that's parallel to the table. So I have one knitting needle that's further away from me, one knitting needle that's closer to me. So the one that's further away from me, I call my back knitting needle. The one that's closer to me, I call my front knitting needle. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this working yarn and I'm just gonna drape it over just my back knitting needle. Now that I have it over just my back knitting needle, I'm gonna twist my yarns and I wanna take the tail towards the back going to the right side of that working yarn. So now I have two pieces of yarn here and they're essentially twisted around that back knitting needle. So now I'm gonna grab onto them with my left hand I'm gonna to push towards myself on my working yarn with my thumb, push away from myself with my pointer finger on my tail, and then I'm just grabbing onto the bottom strands there with my other three fingers. Now I find it helps a little bit if I hold onto this loop. The next thing I need to do is I need to start wrapping this yarn around each knitting needle. So this loop that we just created does count as the first stitch. So that's very helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the knitting needle that's closest to us, wrap it around the piece of yarn that's furthest away, then take the knitting needle that's further from us and wrap it around the yarn that's closest to us. So I tend to like to move my knitting needles rather than move my yarn. So I already have a stitch on the knitting needle that's furthest away from me, so now I need to put one on the one that's closest to me. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to move both my knitting needles all the way up over the back strand. Then I'm gonna go down below that back strand and I want the strand to go in between my two knitting needles. Once I've done that, I'm gonna reposition those two knitting needles so they're pointed back towards my palm. Now I need to wrap the yarn around the opposite knitting needle. So I'm gonna to go towards myself. Then I wanna go down so the strand goes right in between the two knitting needles. Then I'm gonna keep on going underneath them up all the way towards myself then over the top, back towards the center. So now my knitting needles are pointed back at my palm. Now to show those two steps again, and we're gonna keep on repeating them over and over again until we have the number of stitches that we need. First, I'm gonna take the knitting needles all the way back behind that back strand, go down below it, come back up so the strand goes in between the two knitting needles, back to the center, towards ourselves, then go right down on that strand so the strand goes up between the two knitting needles, Keep on bringing the knitting needles towards yourself, up over the top, back to the center. Then repeat again. So all the way back behind, strand goes down the center, back to the middle, towards ourselves, strand comes up the middle, wrap your knitting needles around. And I'm just gonna keep on repeating these two movements over and over again until I have a total of 16 stitches on each knitting needle or 32 stitches total. So one thing I wanted to mention is that it actually doesn't matter if you accidentally wrapped your stitches around going the opposite direction, right? So instead of going that way, you may have gone the opposite way, something like that. That doesn't matter. All that's gonna happen is that on the first knit round, you wanna pay attention if any of your stitches are twisted. If they are twisted, you just need to knit them through the back loop instead of as you normally would for a knit stitch. So one thing to keep in mind there. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna get ready to knit my first round. So what I wanna do first to make sure I don't lose that last stitch that's on there, is I'm gonna take my hands exactly as they are and I'm gonna rotate them like 180 degrees clockwise. I'm gonna pinch that last stitch and now, right now, my knitting needles are pointed over towards the left. I'm gonna do a full flip. <laughs> so now they're pointed over towards the right. And while they're here, and I can see that top stitch, I'm gonna figure out which one of these two strands is my working yarn, because that's the one I actually wanna start knitting with. And I'm just gonna put my tail to the side. Okay, so this one's my tail right here. This one's my working yarn. So important that they stay twisted so we don't lose anything. 
Now when I look across the top, I have all those pearl bumps. That's exactly what we want. I want all of those up towards the ceiling. Now I'm gonna take my back knitting needle, or the one furthest away from me, and I'm gonna pull it towards the right. Now when I do this, there's still plenty of cord over here on the left-hand side. All this does is this now frees up this knitting needle so I can start knitting with it. So now the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my free knitting needle and I'm gonna go right into that first stitch as if I'm knitting it. Now I wanna find my working yarn, making sure I'm not unraveling anything here. And I'm just gonna wrap my working yarn right around and then knit that first stitch. So once I've knit that first stitch, I don't have to worry about anything unraveling anymore, so it takes a lot of the pressure off. Now I'm gonna continue knitting all the way across each one of these stitches on this knitting needle. Once I finish going all the way across that knitting needle, and there's no stitches over here remaining on the left, I'm gonna flip my knitting needles, so now they're pointed towards the right again, and I'm gonna thread back in my second knitting needle point. So now when I look at my work, I still have all those bumps going up towards the ceiling. My working yarn is coming out my back knitting needle, or the one furthest away from me. And now what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna take this back knitting needle, or the one with the working yarn attached to it, I'm gonna pull it towards the right, still plenty of cord over here on the left. And now I'm gonna go into each one of these stitches on this side of my work and knit each one of them. Okay, now that I've gone across that side of my work as well, I've actually just knit my first round. So now I'm gonna take my knitting needle point again, turn it towards the right, thread back in my second knitting needle point. So it's really hard to see at this point, <laughs> but this is actually a little tiny toe starting to form. So if I push all those pearl bumps down in between my two knitting needles, that right down there at the bottom of my work is the very beginning of my toe. So what I wanna make sure that I'm doing is at the beginning of each one of these knitting needles, I wanna make sure I pull that first stitch nice and tight. That way this toe is really gonna to start to begin to form. So on that first round, all I was doing was knitting all the stitches. On this next round, I'm gonna begin working increases as well. So the way the increases are gonna work is we're gonna knit the first stitch, then work a knit front, knit back. So we're gonna increase on the second stitch. We're gonna knit all the way across until two stitches remain. Knit front, knit back, then knit the final stitch. Turn our work and do the exact same thing across the back. So we're gonna increase two stitches on the front knitting needle, two stitches on the back knitting needle. So again, to begin, I'm gonna take my back knitting needle, pull it towards the right, knit the first stitch, Pulling that first stitch nice and tight. Now I'm gonna work a knit front. Don't slide that stitch off my left knitting needle yet. Go into the back of the same stitch, knit it through the back, then slide it off. Now I'm gonna knit until two stitches remain. And again, knit front, don't slide it off knit back, then slide it off. Knit the final stitch, turn my work, thread the second knitting needle point back in. Pull the back knitting needle to the right, knit the first stitch, pulling that one nice and tight. Okay, knit front, knit back. Knit 
knit until two stitches remain. Knit front and back again. Knit the final stitch. So now that I've worked those increases across both of the knitting needle points, that makes up one full increase round. So you have to work across both of those knitting needles there before it's one round. Now when I push those purl bumps down again in the center, you can see I have a little bit more of a toe forming. So as you keep on going, this will become a lot clearer and it will just start to become like a sock coming out down here below your work. So I'm gonna keep on working through the pattern as described now for the rest of my toe. And it's gonna be alternating between rounds where we just knit. So when it's just a knit round, knit across the front, knit across the back. And also those increased rounds where we're increasing towards the front, towards the back, then towards the front, towards the back on both sides of our work. Now that I'm a few rows in, I just wanted to show you what my toe is looking like so far. So one thing to note is that I do help it fold in half, right? So I keep on pushing those purl stitches down each time I restart around to help close up those two sides in my sock. But that is my toe so far. <laughs> so now I'm gonna keep on working through the rest of those increases and knit rounds. Now I just finished working all the way up through those toe increases. And I did do those last two knit rounds in my toe colorway. And now I'm gonna switch up my yarn color. Now this is completely optional and you can definitely just continue knitting on in the exact same color. If you do this method, you just wanna keep on knitting round after round until your total length is two inches shorter than what you would need for the total length of your foot. The reason you wanna leave an extra two inches at the end is so that we can place in the heel. Now I'm gonna be putting in a contrasting color so what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna cut my yarn and I leave about eight inches or so. And I'm gonna tuck that tail to the inside of my sock. Now the next part of my sock, I'm gonna knit with this yellow color. So I'm gonna, again, take about eight inches or so, tuck that to the inside of my sock. Now I'm gonna begin a magic loop round just as I regularly would. So pull the back needle to the right, go right into that first stitch. And now I'm just gonna pick up that new strand of yarn that I just added and begin knitting with it. Now I'm gonna continue knitting round after round in this contrast color until my total length of the sock is two inches shorter than what I would need for the total length of my foot. Okay, so you've now reached the portion of the video where you get to decide which heel you'd like to add into your sock. So the version I'm gonna be showing you in this video right now is gonna be a short row heel. So what's nice about this is you just add it right into your sock. You don't have to go back in later on, add anything. And they are fairly quick and easy to add to socks. So that's the version I'm about to show you. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit more advanced, I'd recommend giving the Afterthought heel a try, and I'll link to this exact video using this sock down below in the description box. So I've kind of been growing to like Afterthought heels more than short row heels in my socks. And what I like about them is that they actually provide like a little bit more depth and space in that heel, right? So you see just purely in the stitch counts, these heels are a little bit larger. So something to keep in mind. And now you can decide which path you'd like to go down. So it's kind of like a choose your own adventure now. <laughs> but yes, now let's work on the one I'm showing you in this video, the short row heel. Now next up, I'm gonna be placing my heel. So the first thing I need to do is I need to basically take into account the number of stitches I have and calculate how many stitches I want in the center portion of my heel. So if I look at a sock heel, the way they're knit is first we start off with the full number of stitches or half of the total number of sock stitches and we're gonna decrease inwards until we just have a center portion left. Then we're gonna do the opposite, where now we're gonna increase all the way out until we have half of the sock stitches left again. So what we decide is how many stitches we want in the center portion. So how I'm gonna calculate this for my sock is I'm gonna take half of my total number of stitches. 
So I have 68 stitches total, so half of that is going to be 34. Now I think about it as if I'm dividing that number of stitches into three sections. So I'm going to end up with 11 stitches in each one of the three sections, and then a remainder of one. So there's essentially one extra stitch. That one extra stitch I always add to the center. So now when I look at these numbers, I'm going to have 11 stitches on the first side, then 12 center stitches, then 11 stitches on this other side. So that's what I'm going for with my sock. Now if you're one, knitting one of the other sizes that's described in the pattern, each one of the stitch counts will be provided down there, as well as the exact number of counts on each one of these rows I'm about to show you. Now I'm going to be knitting my heel using a contrasting color. So I'm not actually going to cut my current working yarn. I'm just going to leave this off to the side so then I can pick it back up when I begin knitting my sock leg. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my new color yarn that I'm working the heel in and I just take about eight inches or so. I'm going to thread that to the inside of my sock. Now I'm going to pull through my back knitting needle as if I'm starting to knit across now. And as I knit across, I'm going to be using my new color that I'm using for the heel. Or if you're just knitting it in the same color, just knit right across in the same color. And I'm going to knit all the way up until there's one stitch remaining across these half of the stitches. Right, so essentially I have 34 stitches on my first knitting needle because mine are divided in half. So I'm going to knit 33 stitches across. So I just finished going across with one stitch remaining on my left knitting needle. Now I'm going to turn my work. I'm not going to do anything with my knitting needles though. I'm going to leave them exactly as they are. So now we're going to knit across the back side of those exact same stitches. So when we're working the heel, we're only working across and then back across the same half of the stitches. We aren't going to be doing anything on these other stitches. So the first thing I have to do to prevent holes from forming is I have to do what's called make a double stitch. And here we're going to be making a double stitch on the purl side or the back side of our work. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to take my right knitting needle point and slip just that first stitch from my left to right knitting needle. Now I'm going to take my working yarn, I'm going to pull it up back behind the knitting needle, then in between the two knitting needles to the front again. So what I did there is I essentially pulled up the stitch right below it, and now that single stitch appears as two loops or a double stitch. Now I'm going to continue purling all the way across this side of my work until I have one stitch remaining over here on the left hand side. Now I have that one stitch remaining, so here I'm going to turn my work. And now the first thing I need to do on this next row is I need to make a double stitch, but now I need to make the double stitch on the knit side of my work. So to do this, I'm first going to bring my working yarn in between my two knitting needles to the front. Then I'm going to slip that first stitch from my left to right knitting needle, slipping it purlwise so I'm not twisting it. Then I'm going to pull that working yarn back behind my knitting needle to the back. So now I just turn that single stitch into what appears now as a double stitch. Now I'm going to continue knitting all the way across this row until I've come all the way up to, but not including, my previous double stitch. So I'm going to go up and then knit this one stitch before that. Then I'll show you how we're going to turn our work and then work across the back side again. So I'm going all the way up to, but not including, my previous double stitch. Now I'm going to turn my work. And now on this side, I'm first going to make a double stitch on the purl side. So I'm going to slip that stitch purlwise, pull my yarn back behind, then in between the knitting needles to the front. And I'm going to purl all the way across, up to, and including, the one stitch before my double stitch on this side. 
purl that last stitch before the double stitch. Now I'm going to turn my work. And on this next row, I need to make a double stitch on the knit side. So I'm going to bring my working yarn to the front, slip that stitch purlwise, then pull that stitch up over to the back. So I'm just going to knit one more stitch so that stays in place there while I explain what we're doing next. So now what we're going to continue doing is we're going to continue knitting all the way up until one stitch before the previous double stitch. Turn our work, make a double stitch, purl all the way across until one stitch before our previous double stitch on this side. So what we're doing is we're going back and forth and we're making it narrower and narrower. That's our goal. So I'm going to continue doing that until I have the number of stitches in the center that's specified in the pattern. So for the size I'm knitting, I'm going to finish after I've just purled across and there were 13 purl stitches. Then I'm going to come back and show you how to do the two center rows for the sock and then how to begin increasing outward again. So for now, we're just decreasing in on either side by making those double stitches. Now I just went across my last purl side row on the first half of the heel and now I'm going to turn my work and I need to begin the two center rows for the heel. So for these two center rows, I do need two stitch markers. So here I've just taken two pieces of waste yarn and just tied little loops. Those work perfectly because we really only need these real quick. So before I start this row, I just wanted to describe the different stitch counts that I have. So originally my goal was the 11 stitches on either side, then 12 stitches in the center. So starting over here on the left hand side, what I have is I have one single stitch and then I have 10 double stitches in a row. Yep, just double counted. <laughs> now in the center, I should have actually one more than I need to have. Yep, so I have 13 currently, that's perfect. And now over here on the other side, I should have my one single stitch and then nine double stitches. So this side is currently one stitch short. So how we're gonna remedy that is first we're gonna bring our working yarn to the front, slip the first stitch purlwise, then make a double stitch. Now that I've made that double stitch, my work is now balanced, so I have the same number of double stitches on either side. Now I'm going to continue knitting across the center stitches until I reach where those double stitches start. So now I'm up to where those double stitches start, so I'm going to place one stitch marker on my right knitting needle. Now I'm going to continue knitting across and each one of these double stitches, I'm going to knit both halves of it together to make a new single stitch. So this has worked really similarly to a knit two together. So I'm just going to take my right knitting needle point into both of the loops, wrap my yarn around, pull through. And again, I'm going to continue doing this. It's really similar to a knit two together all the way across all of these double stitches. Now I am also going to knit that final stitch. Now I'm going to turn my work. So what I found really helps to prevent any holes from forming on this inner corner over here is that I'm going to slip this first stitch purlwise, then I'm going to make a double stitch with it. Now I'm going to continue purling all the way across, past my first stitch marker, then purl across all those center stitches all the way up until my next set of double stitches begin. Now before I start working these double stitches, I'm going to place my next stitch marker on my right knitting needle. And now just like how on the other side, I knit both of the halves together. Here I'm going to purl both of the sides of the double stitch together to form a single stitch. And I'm going to continue doing that all the way across all of these double stitches. Now I am going to purl that final stitch. I'm just going to pull on my tail there too, just to tighten that one up a bit. And now I'm going to turn my work. Now I'm ready to begin the second half of my heel. So now we're going to begin expanding outwards instead of going inwards. 
So the way the first row of the second half of the heel begins is first, we're gonna start by making a double stitch. Then I'm gonna knit all the way up until my second stitch marker. Now I'm actually gonna remove that stitch marker Put it to the side, I don't need it anymore. And now I'm gonna knit one more stitch. I'm gonna turn my work. And now for this next row, I'm gonna begin by making a double stitch on the purl side. And now I'm gonna purl all the way across until my remaining stitch marker. Now that I've reached that stitch marker, I'm gonna take it off. Again, put it to the side, I don't need it anymore. Now I'm gonna purl one more stitch and turn my work. Now this is where the repeat really begins. So I'm gonna bring my yarn to the front, make a double stitch. And now we're gonna begin expanding outwards, one stitch beyond where our previous double stitch is. So I'm gonna knit all the way across until that double stitch, knit the double stitch together, then knit one more stitch. Just make sure you knit the double stitch together, knit one more. Now I'm gonna turn my work. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new double stitch. So we just move that double stitch essentially out one stitch further. Now I'm gonna purl all the way across until my double stitch on this side, purl that double stitch together, then purl one more stitch. Purling the double stitch together, purl one more, turn my work. So now what we're gonna continue doing is we're gonna continue working these double stitches out one stitch at a time, right? So we have one double stitch on either side right now, and they're gonna keep on moving further and further out in the row. So when you wanna stop is you wanna stop when you have two double stitches in a row over here on the left-hand side of your work when you're looking at the knit side. So once you have two double stitches in a row, again, don't do anything with that final double stitch over here. Stop before you get there. So I'll end up with two double stitches in a row on this side. And over here on the right-hand side, I'll have a double stitch, then a single stitch, then a double stitch. That's when you wanna stop after you finish that last purl side row. Then I'll come back and I'll show you how to add in that final double stitch and rejoin in the round to continue working the sock. So I just worked across that final purl side row for my second half of the sock. So now when I look at my sock, I have those two double stitches in a row. When I look across the purl side over here on the right. So now I'm gonna turn my work. And now this next step is actually gonna depend on whether or not you knit your sock all in one color or if you use the contrasting color for the heel. So if you knit your sock all in one color, so the heel is the same color as the foot and the leg, in that case, all you're gonna to wanna to do is bring your yarn to the front, slip that first stitch purlwise, make a double stitch, then continue knitting all the way across the side of the sock, knit each one of these double stitches together, so make a single stitch, then a single stitch, then turn your work, continue knitting all the way across the front, and then just keep on circling, right? So you're gonna keep on working all the way up the leg. And over here on this side, again, you will have those two double stitches that you're gonna to work together to just create one knit stitch for each one of them. So now if you didn't do that though, so if you are doing the contrasting color for your heel, so that's what I have here, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut my yarn for my um, heel and I'm gonna leave about an eight inch tail here. Now I don't need that yarn anymore, so I'm just gonna put it to the side. So now the first thing I need to do is I'm gonna take this double stitch that's on my right knitting needle and I'm gonna pass both halves of it onto my left knitting needle. Now what I can do is I can start knitting 
with that color that I left over here at the beginning of the round. So this is my yellow color for the rest of the sock. Now I'm going to knit that first double stitch together. Now next up, what I need to do is I actually need to make a double stitch and then knit it together with this next stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tail yarn that I used for that heel, I'm going to bring it to the front of my work, then I'm going to pull that piece of yarn to the back so that I've now created a double stitch and you do kind of just have to hold it tight back there. Now I'm going to knit both sides of that double stitch together with my new yellow color. Now I can drop that tail again and I'm going to continue working all the way across this side of the heel. I'm going to knit each side of these double stitches together for each one of them. Now I'm going to turn my work and now I am begin, going to begin knitting in the full round. So I'm going to thread back in my second knitting needle and begin working kind of like the traditional knitting round. Just tuck all my tails to the inside so they don't get in the way. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to continue knitting round after round all the way up for the length that I'd like for the leg of my sock. Now keep in mind when you're measuring it that we are going to knit a cuff ribbing. I typically like to save about two inches for that top ribbing. So I would knit for about two inches shorter than the full length that you'd like your sock leg to be. Now I just finished going up a little ways for the leg of the sock. And now I'm going to add in my cuff. So if you're just doing this in a single color yarn, you're just going to want to begin knitting a knit two, purl two ribbing all the way across the round. And I'm typically going to repeat that for about two inches. Now, as with my toe and heel, I'm going to do mine in a contrasting color. So I'm going to cut my original yarn, leaving about eight inch tail, thread the tail to the inside. And now I'm just going to thread about eight inches of my new colorway to the inside of my sock so I can begin knitting with that one. Now what I like to do when I'm working with a contrasting color is before I actually begin working the ribbing, I'm going to knit one full round in my new colorway. Then after that, I'm going to begin knitting about two inches of the knit two purl two ribbing. Oops. So I'm just knitting one full round first though. Now I'm all ready to cast off and for these socks you want to make sure to use a really stretchy cast off method for this top edge. So the one I'm going to be showing you in this video is called Jenny's Super Stretchy Cast Off or Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Cast Off. There's a couple different names for it. And the way it works is it's very similar to kind of like a traditional where you just pass the previous stitch up over and off the next stitch. Except we're going to add in yarn overs in between the different stitches. Now the first thing to pay attention to is that I have my working yarn coming out down below my work right now, not as I normally would for a knit stitch where I want it up in between the two knitting needles draped over my back knitting needle. So my working yarn is just hanging out below. Now I'm going to take my back knitting needle, pull it towards the right, and now I'm going to go right into that first stitch as if to knit it. Now when I knit it, you're going to notice I'm also creating a yarn over. That's exactly what I want. So now I have a yarn over and a knit stitch. Now first up, I'm going to take that yarn over and I'm going to slide that one up, over, and off that knit stitch. Now we're all set up. So again next, I have another knit stitch. So I'm going to bring my yarn to the front so I can create a new yarn over. I'm going to knit the next stitch. And now when I look at my right knitting needle, I have three stitches over here. So now instead of just slipping up over and off the first one or the one furthest to the right, I'm actually going to slide those first two stitches up over and off that third stitch. 
to make sure I don't lose it. I always kind of pull on that working yarn a bit, make sure it doesn't come off. Perfect. Now, next up, I have a purl stitch and I want to create a yarn over before a purl stitch. So I'm actually going to leave my working yarn in the back here. I'm going to go right into that stitch to purl it. And now when I purl through here, I'm going to end up with a yarn over and a purl stitch. Now I'm going to take the previous two stitches, slide those ones up over and off the one I just worked. Again, next step, I have a purl stitch. So I'm going to bring my working yarn to the back. So I create a yarn over first. I'm going to go right into that purl stitch, purl it. I have three stitches over here. I'm going to take the previous two, slide them up over and off. Next up, I have a knit stitch and I want to make a yarn over first. So this is perfect where my yarn already is. It's in the front of my work, so it'll create a yarn over. I'm going to knit the stitch. I'm going to pass the previous two up over and off. Now next up I have another knit stitch. So I'm going to bring my yarn first to make sure yarn to the front first to make sure I make a yarn over. Knit that stitch. Now pass the previous two up over and off. And I'm going to keep on doing this all the way around this top edge. The thing to remember is you just basically always want to have your working yarn on the opposite side to where you usually would, right? So if I'm purling, I want my working yarn in the back so that I create that yarn over. If I'm knitting, I want my working yarn coming out the front so I'm creating the knit yarn over. Now when I finish going all the way across, this first side and I have no more stitches left on my left knitting needle. I'm going to turn my work thread back in my free knitting needle point that doesn't have the single stitch on it. And now I'm just going to take that other knitting needle point and now just kind of tilt it back over. <laughs> so now it's in my right hand. And now I can continue casting off all the way across the second knitting needle. And this is how it's looking so far. Really, really stretchy. So that's perfect. Now I've just finished going all the way around. So first up, I'm just going to stretch out my final loop just a bit so I can take my knitting needle off. I'm going to cut my yarn leaving about 10 inches or so. And for this next step, we're going to need a tapestry needle. So I'm going to use one of these tapestry needles from Hobby. So now how I like to close this up is what I'm going to look for is along this top edge, I want to find the rightmost top stitch. And I want to pick up both halves of it. Now I'm going to thread my tail through there first. Then I'm going to go through, making sure it isn't twisted, that final loop. So that essentially just kind of pulls that final loop over towards the left just a little bit. And if you want to, too, you can re-thread that end through just one half. Same thing again. Perfect. And that kind of prevents there from being like a big step up or down right at the beginning of the round. Now I'm going to continue weaving in this end. So the way I do it is I'm just going to trace along one of these stitches that's right near it. So I actually like to use like the columns of knit stitches. So I'm going to pick this row over here, or this column of stitches. And once I've weaved it in a little bit, a little ways, I'm just going to cut that tail and then move on to my next view. So I have some right here where I change colors. I have a few around my heel. And then lastly, down at the toe. Now, once I'm all done weaving in all those ends, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soak my single sock, or if you've already made the second one, the set of socks, in some lukewarm water, roll them up in a towel, and then I'll come back and I'll show you my finished sock. 
Thank you so much for joining me today for this Toe Up Sock project. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. That way you stay up to date on all my future videos. I'll see you next time.